who are, live very, very close to the uh, Corbett Plaza are out of their homes. Other people who live in the cordoned off area but are um, have not been told to leave have to been told to stay in their homes, and that's what they're doing this morning. We're going to show you a view from uh, way up high. I think we can do that right now. Uh, we have a camera up on the PPNL building. And there's that view from PPNL. As you see the building looking down on the top of Corporate Plaza, PPNL just a couple of blocks to the west of where we are. We have some other camera locations as well. We have a camera as well down on the street. Uh, we have a camera we are going to sacrifice for the sake of this uh, project this morning. We're calling it uh, Destructo Cam. And that camera is down on uh, 7th Street, right across the street from the building itself. And so when the implosion takes place, the building's going to blow and take the camera with it, as far as we know. And here, I think we're looking at that shot uh, right now from Destructo Camp, right down across the street and in an area where people have not been allowed now for many, many weeks, directly across the street from the building, approximately the area of the uh, sinkhole. And that's going to capture the implosion in, of course, a very dramatic way. We expect the camera will be gone, but we'll be able to recover that picture and show it to you after the blast takes place, perhaps in the slow motion, so you can see what it's like from down there on the street level. This view here from the parking garage on Linden Street is only about a half a block away. In fact, uh, some of the reporters who gathered here, and there are a good many, are uh, finding out that from the city fire officials that this could be a, a place where we feel quite a lot of a concussive effect from this explosion and they've told us to duck behind the wall that's behind me here so we're ready to do that when the time comes in case there is some debris that comes in our direction we should have a real good view from here Newland Archinol from Channel 69 News is also uh, with us today she is over at Center Square which happens to be the place where the uh, button is going to be pushed or I guess it's a toggle switch Newland are you there? Yes I'm here Rob well we're at 7th and Hamilton and we're actually at the spot where you said the button will be pushed uh, right now the central salvage company and workers from the company are tying up some last minute details and they are here getting ready for the implosion. Now, you may be wondering, uh, our viewers might be wondering where, why I'm wearing a hard hat and Rob, you are not. That's because the mayor has asked us to take special precautions. Uh, they expect that there will be a lot of dust. There's a real breeze out here. And I just talked to Jim Riker, who is the head of uh, Central Salvage Company, and he expects that a lot of dust will be blowing in our direction when the building finally comes down. So we've got to be careful and protect ourselves from any sort of falling glass or bricks or debris that might come out. Now, you might also note that behind me I've got some uh, trucks, and the company has set up a lot of tractor trailers behind us, and that is to protect other buildings in the area right across from Corporate Plaza. Uh, they expect when the building comes down, that will create a blast of air. It will be forced outwards when all is said and done, and uh, anything that might come out with that blast of air, any sort of debris, could go into windows and buildings across the street, so they have lined tractor trailers around the area to protect any buildings from that. Meantime, things are pretty quiet around here. There are a couple people with home video cameras actually down the block, down 7th Street towards Union Street. They're trying to get sort of a bird's eye view, if you will, of uh, the building and any sort of view they can to record this memorable moment on their home video cameras. So things pretty quiet. Like I said, just some workers around the area making sure that things are tied up for the big moment. I think we've got like 26 minutes to the final countdown. Uh, we've seen fire crews out here. They're going to be blasting their sirens. Three minutes before the implosion, you'll hear uh, three minutes of sirens, and then you're going to hear another minute, uh, and then a break, and then the final 10-second countdown, and then the building will go down. And we're at the spot where the button pusher will push the button that starts off the dynamite that implodes the building in. So that's the scene from here at 7th and Hamilton. Rob, how do things look up your way? Well, bright and sunny up here and lots of uh, high hopes and expectations for a very, very dramatic event. A lot of people are prepared to duck uh, here on top of the parking garage. We have reporters from all over the place. We'll get a chance in a few minutes to perhaps show you uh, what it looks like here in all the media, all the cameras on various levels of this parking garage. And also to give you a chance to hear some words from the button pusher you referred to, Steve Puchin. Back here on the uh, parking garage on Linden Street.
Fort Rip Plaza is behind us. As good a day as any, I suppose, for a building implosion. And we're going to have that at about 9 o'clock this morning. As far as we know, everything is all go for that. The conditions are right, and the button will be pushed over at Center Square. Now, over at Center Square right now, Newland Archon all standing by live. Newland? Okay, Rob. Well, as you can see, I, there are a lot of uh, workers just uh, getting ready for some last-minute details, and uh, the countdown is on. Joining me now is uh, Allentown's Public Works Director, Neil Kern. And, Neil, how's everything going? Everything on schedule? Everything's on schedule. We just talked to demolition people. Uh, all the dynamite set, all the wires are in place, and the button's ready to be pushed at 9 a.m. Okay. Now, I understand the city has taken a lot of precautions to make sure that uh, the area is buttoned down. That's correct. There are uh, police everywhere. There's only so many people who are allowed into this area. Uh, the mayor issued passes, and you have one of those to get in. Uh, we've had a lot of publicity over the past two days. Some buildings in close proximity have been evacuated. Uh, most of the others, people have been told to stay indoors, and the police are patrolling the areas to make sure people stay uh, a safe distance away. Okay. What about uh, expecting any water or gas problems? No, we have our standby crews on. UGI has crews here. The water, uh, Allentown Water Department is here just in case we're going to go around and sound the water mains uh, in the uh, vicinity right after the blast and some things like that. Just kind of extra precautions, trying to be safe rather than sorry. Okay, so you're not thinking that any other there will be any w more water main pipes as a result of some of this rumbling? No, uh, we really don't think that's the case, but we feel it's better to be safe, have a standby crew here and test the mains just to be uh, extra safe because of the potential sinkholes in the area. Okay, and they'll be checking right after the implosion? Yes, our crews are uh, stationed down behind the Reed Hotel, and uh, within, you know, 15, 20 minutes after the dust has settled and they can get out, they're going to go out and uh, check all the water mains within a two-block radius of this area. Okay, thanks so much, Neil Kern. Good luck. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, well, uh, people have been standing by. A lot of people with cameras and video cameras trying to record this memorable moment. Uh, we've also told you in previous stories in our coverage that that uh, a lot of pieces of the building have been up for sale. Uh, the Downtown Improvement District Authority has been selling T-shirts and uh, pieces of the brick to record the moment. Uh, so the commercialization of this entire project is taking on a life of its own. And Thomas reports. Every cloud has a silver lining, or so the saying goes. So when a sinkhole swallowed the seven-story corporate plaza, Allentown officials tried to look on the bright side. They capitalized on public interest and raised money for local causes. They sold bricks, sweatshirts, and raffle tickets. You ready? Turn them around. Okay, here we got to shake them up. Shake those yeah, yeah, there we go. The campaign, called the Big Bang, made big bucks. We anticipating bringing in, in the neighborhood of $20,000, which would be split half and half with the Downtown Improvement District Authority and um, the Lehigh Valley chapter of the American Red Cross. DITA will use the money to plant trees, and the Red Cross will replenish its emergency funds that were drained by a late January gas explosion and then the corporate collapse. Bricks, sweatshirts, and other plaza paraphernalia have been selling like hotcakes. It seems most everyone wants a piece of the plaza. But there are those who feel making money from the corporate collapse is not in good taste. With all the tragedy going on, I mean, this upset a lot of people's lives, and they made a raffle out of it. But when I heard that they... they uh, we're giving the money to the Red Cross, and I felt better about it. I just hope that's what they do. I'm not aware of that, but if they're doing that, I don't think it's really appropriate. I don't think it's appropriate to make money that way. But Allentown officials say they're just taking life's lemons and making lemonade. And they add the true victims of the collapse support their efforts. Mark Mendelson, the property owner who owns Corporate Plaza, has been extremely supportive of it. He was the one who suggested we do the sweatshirts. Some of the evacuees bought sweatshirts and raffle tickets, and Buyer Barber, who was a tenant in Corporate Plaza, bought um, $100 worth of tickets. So it's been well received. In Allentown, Ann Thomas, Channel 69 News.